Hi, uh, we are Diversity. <clears throat> I'm Christina Ktipe and this is Nicolas Travasaros. Uh, we are based in Athens and London and we are here to discuss about areas of opportunities in design and architecture in Greece. The next one, please. So, for many years, Greeks and tourists have been living their myth in Greece. Up to 2009, when the debt crisis knocked the country's door, uh, causing a complete shutdown of the Greek economy. The onset of the problem finds everyone prepared and the system crashes. Uh, the first reaction of the Greek debt crisis is anger and blame. The full amount of the debt is revealed along with a complex set of Greek particularities that shape this debt, also known as Greek reality. The country is being swept by a huge wave of negative publicity featuring constantly in the international press. Uh, during this phase of uh, the crisis, the next one please, the red lines often mentioned by the Greek politicians of the right to work, the right to, sat to a satisfactory standard of living, etc., are being crossed. Uh, the country comes under the threat of a total derail. Okay. After the three years of tension, it seems like the debate is entering a different stage. The, ang the anger turns into sympathy. The debt crisis is uh, now a full-blown systemic social crisis with many ramifications. The special difficulties uh, in addressing them draws a different sort of attention. A negative stance and default denial to even try to understand, to understand the Greek reality mm. gradually transforms into an original curiosity to explore the unknown territory. In architecture, this becomes very apparent at the Venice Biennale last August, of last August. The Greek participation made in Athens, uh, in Athens discussed, uh, curated by the architects Dragones and Eschiada, attracts unusually numerous visits and is being discussed by the international architecture media. Uh, Lord Nor Norman Foster exhibits photos of the riots in Athens at the Arsenale. Usually unapproachable star architects, a term of pre-crisis era, like Zaha Hadid and Jean Nouvel, gladly consents to interviews to, interviews to Greek journalists, being interested to evaluate the parameters of the Greek crisis. Uh, at this point, the focus of the architecture debate is monopolized by Athens. This is evident in many articles in uh, the press, like th those two, and uh, one of the most current is under the spotlight is Athens the New Berlin, Kathmerini, by Margarita Bonara, attempting to find similarities with Berlin after the fall of the goal and the opportunities presented there all the time. Uh, the, more, the most uh, well-known international projects also refer to Athens, like Made in Athens, Rethink Athens, Remap, uh, also Sabros and Arthur's Foundation Cultural Center, Parler of Bay Integrated Regeneration Project, etc. Athens is the first era of opportunity, of opportunities. Uh, this newly emerging intellectual fascination with Athens is ever growing, and so does the list of design, competition, conference, exhibition, lecture and talks, articles, etc. The, the aim is to understand, discuss, and ex explore the possible realities of Athens. And at the same time, yeah. Uh, at the same time that Athens is being discussed more than ever, there is an amazing uh, phenomenon that 54% of the population of Athens would happily escape and would gladly move to live at the periphery, at another territory, if they had the chance, if they were presented with the opportunity. And that's quite amazing to, to think because Athens, in Greece, has an amazing territory that has not been seriously discussed as a place to live. And I'm referring to the Aegean archipelago with all the islands and the amazing waterscape that surrounds them. It is a place that we have, we're all familiar with and we have all enjoyed as a place of escape, as a place for holidays, as a place of having fun, but not seriously thought about as a place for living. To our mind, it is, it is connected and it is uh, uh, connected to tourism and probably the money that can come Am, am, is it open? Can you hear me? Okay. So it is a place that is linked to tourism and the, and, and the, and the in revenue that can come from that, but not seriously contested as a place for living. 
Yet already in 2006, there has been an architectural idea that has been presented in the Venice Biennale, which actually sees that archipelago as a dispersed city, as a, as a different way of living. And there is a tremendous opportunity here to see the potential of actually creating a unique territory, a hybrid space between urban and, 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 and rural, and urban and the periphery for living. It is a place that is, which if you see from the statistics that we'll discuss later, it's very, very low density in, in terms of population. It's actually, the, the, it's, it's actually below half of, 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 the, of the national average, and it only has about 40 inhabitants per square kilometer. It is a unique opportunity to think radically about how you know, we can find a new way to design around the water and the land, at the frontier between water and land. Places like Barcelona, Amsterdam, Tokyo that have done it successfully have managed to reinvent themselves and benefited significantly from that. Already since the 1960s, there have been proposals to find ways to live in the border between, in the space between the land and the, and the city. I'm just referring to, to that project by Kenzo Tange, the Japanese metabolist architect, who was proposing a, a space, a city, for 15 million people in the Tokyo Basin. But other countries as well have gone either, even further, and what appeared like an utopia in the 60s have actually come into life. Dubai had to recreate a coastline. It's not a very successful architectural example, but it shows that the enormous potential to reinvent a sort of life that is completely different to what we're used to. And the amazing discussion that we'd like to invite you to is the possibility to explore a city that we would call inter-island city, a city that is made of the islands and the water between them. What would be the technology in that city? What would be the transportation system? What would be the new building typologies that we had to invent to live in that city? Thank you.